Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new here and welcome back after a much needed break. Um, today's video is going to be the beginning of a series. So this story um, actually comes off of Reddit. My roommate recommended it to me, so I'm going to read it. Um, but I am going to break it up into parts because it is kind of long. And then, yeah, it'll be posted once a week, every single Wednesday, because why not? Um, so to start off, I know there was one at the beginning of this video, but I am going to reiterate Please, please, please be aware this story contains graphic scene descriptions and content. Um, so it is not for the faint of heart or the light stomached, I assure you. I have not actually read it myself, so I'm just going into this trusting what my roommate has told me <laughs> um, and hoping that she is right that it is that graphic. But she's pretty truthful about a lot of stuff like that. So... Without further ado, here is the first part of Feed the Pig. I slowly opened my eyes. My head was swimming and a dull pain surrounded my throat. I was thirsty. That was the first thing I noticed. I licked my dry lips as my surroundings faded into focus. My body ached and I realized it was because I was tightly bound to a metal chair in the middle of an empty room. The barren concrete walls were stained and dirty. The floor beneath my bare feet was cold and slightly wet. A single bulb lit the room, dangling from the ceiling by a string. It cast moving shadows and I blinked back darkness. An open door stood before me, but I couldn't see anything but the wall of a hallway. I tried to clear my head, tried to remember how I got here. I squeezed my eyes shut and forced myself not to panic. I slowed my breathing and focused my thoughts desperately trying to summon some recollection of why I was here. I couldn't remember anything. I opened my eyes and exhaled, a parched throat throbbing. I could hear sound echoing off the hallway walls outside the door, screaming, clanging, howling, all very distant, but that did nothing to help calm my nerves. Hello, I cried, the word tearing at my vocal cords. I felt my chest hitch in pain and I cleared my throat and yelled again. Is anyone there? Hello? The dark hallway remained silent, except for the constant echoes. I shut my mouth and tried to wiggle free of my bindings, but the rope was knotted impossibly tight. I fought back against my imagination as it flooded my mind with horrific scenarios of what awaited me. If I could only remember. Suddenly, footsteps erupted from outside the door. A rapid patter of small feet. My hopes rose and I trained my attention to the door, praying it was help. A young boy ran into the room, dressed in a red onesie, complete with padded feet. Stretched over his face was a plastic devil mask. The eye holes revealed massive blue eyes that greeted me curiously. Taken aback, I opened my mouth to speak, but that's when I noticed something was off. His eyes were huge, impossibly round and bulging from their sockets. It sent a shiver of unease down my spine, but I shook it off. This child might be able to free me. Hey, I hissed urgently. Hey, kid, can you get me out of here? The boy took a step closer, cocking his head, but remaining silent. I rattled my bound arms against the chair. Cut me free, please. I shouldn't be here. There's some kind of mistake. The boy eyed me behind his strange mask and stopped directly in front of me. He leaned in close and whispered, his voice like wet silk. You did a bad thing. Confused, I shook my head. No, no, this is a mistake. I didn't do anything. The boy's enormous blue eyes suddenly filled with sadness. Oh, you did a really, really bad thing. I shook my head again violently. No, I'm sorry. I don't remember. Just please get me out of this chair. Suddenly, before either of us could speak again, a man came charging into the room. He was overweight and dressed in overalls, his grizzled face twisted in seething anger. He was holding a sawed-off shotgun, shotgun in his arms. I didn't do anything, I cried as he advanced on us, my voice cracking. I'm not supposed to be here. 
The big man ignored me and instead grabbed the kid and shoved him hard against the wall. The boy grunted as his back struck the concrete and his eyes rose to meet the grizzled man's. Wordlessly, the man raised his shotgun, placed it against the boy's forehead, and blew his head off. Chunks of gore splattered the wall as shock slugged me in the stomach like an iron fist. My ears rang and time seemed to slow as I watched in horror as the headless body crumpled to the ground. My breath rushed back into my lungs and time seemed to readjust. Jesus fucking Christ, I screamed, straining against the ropes, my eyes bulging in horrific shock. What the fuck? The man ignored my screams as he bent down and picked up the boy. He slung the ruined corpse over his shoulder and walked out the doorway. Suddenly, the hallway erupted with malicious laughter, a chorus of voices all howling in glee. I shut my eyes, the noise deafening as absolute terror filled my every pore. After a few moments, the laughter faded and I cautiously opened my eyes, unable to believe what I had just witnessed. Hello? I jumped as I realized there was another man standing before me. He was dressed in a simple white button-down shirt and jeans. His brown hair was cut short and he appeared to be in his early 30s. His green eyes were dull and lifeless, his full lips pulled down at the corners. What is going on? Where am I? I cried, near fear pooling in my stomach like hot blood. The man crossed his arms. So you're the new one, huh? He shook his head. You people disgust me. Questions bubbled on my lips, but he waved them off with a sharp chop of his hand, slicing the air and demanding my silence. He ran his tongue over his teeth, sneering. You look like you've already seen some horrors this place holds, huh? Yes, I can tell by the look in your eyes. You're terrified. You've seen something, haven't you? It doesn't seem all that bad now, does it? Looking back? You've been here for five minutes and you're already shitting your pants. Where am I? I gasped, unable to hold back any longer. What do you people want? The man crossed his arms behind his back. I bet you want to get out of here, don't you? I bet you'd like to go back to your home, your family, everything. Please, I interrupted. Whatever I did to you, I'm sorry. I really am, but I don't remember. The man rolled his eyes. You didn't do anything to me. You did it to yourself. You really don't remember anything? I shook my head and felt tears brimming in my eyes, liquid fear. The man looked at me with contempt. You waited until your wife left for work and then you went out to the wood shelf and, ooh, woodshed, and then you went out to the woodshed and hung yourself. You're dead. The recent memory rose in my mind like a monster from a bog. My eyes went wide, as much as I wanted to deny it. He was right. I had killed myself. The incident tore through my brain like a bullet train and left me reeling. I'm Danny, by the way, the man said, ignoring the shock looked on my face. And I'm number two here. I run the orientation process. I want to make this quick because I'm tired of repeating this fucking thing to you pathetic suicidals. You get one question before I begin. He stared down at me and I scrambled to organize my thoughts into something cohesive. This was all horrifying. Why had I killed myself? I fought against the fog and panic and the mists of confusion slowly began to lift. I had just lost my job. Yes, that was a start. I squeezed my eyes shut and forced more of the memory to emerge. I had lost my job and I was about to lose the house. My wife, Tess, she found out and was going to leave me. I didn't have any way out, didn't have any options. Getting fired had come out of the blue and I didn't have much in savings. I was broke, soon to be homeless, and my wife hated me for it. There was something else. Yes, that's right. She had been cheating on me. I had seen the texts on her phone while she slept one night and confirmed my suspicions. My life had degraded to shit and I had run out of options. Humiliated and ashamed, I had decided death was my only option. Hey fucker, do you have a question or not? Danny said, snapping his fingers in front of my face. I was sucked back into reality and I asked the only question that mattered. Is this hell?
I almost feel like that's a good place to end the first part of this video because I want to leave it on a cliffhanger for everybody. Um, so that is the end of the first part of Feed the Pig. If you want to see part two, please check back in next Wednesday because I will have this uploaded for you. Um, and yeah. I'm excited to see what the future holds for this story already. It has already started off with a bang, literally and figuratively. Um, and I am actually really intrigued about what is happening here. I'm already getting a few vibes, but I just want to wait and see what you guys think. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications. And remember, I do upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, and yeah, please leave a comment. If you've read this story, please don't leave any spoilers. But if you are reading along with me, I would love to hear what your thoughts are so far. Thank you ever so much. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.